this is not only down to Thomas Tuchel. This shows a buy-in team where the attitude is not right. This shows uh, a team that hiding behind the skirt of Thomas Tuchel. This shows a team that doesn't know what's on stake here, not only for them, but for the whole club. I mean, there are equal points now with Stuttgart. Hi and welcome to the German Fußball Podcast. I'm your host Marcus Fjortoft and as always joined by Jan Fjortoft. And before we go into Leverkusen, only needing two more points to become Bundesliga champion before head of sport Max Ebel at Bayern with rather honest post-match comments and an intense and very exciting relegation battle. Dad, we need to sum up the weekend a bit. You've, you've, you've been busy, you've been around at some of the biggest stages in the world. Um, give us a little update as to how your how your weekend's been. Yeah, we started on Thursday. We did that together. That was not one of the biggest stages in the world, but we went back to County Ground for Swindon Town. Had we had our thirtieth anniversary for our uh, time in the Premier League it was great to catch up with the with the boys again. We were ten, twelve pe- players, uh, still the same bad story starting as we saw each other. Last night, that was great, of course. Then we went to, to London. I did Crystal Palace against uh, Manchester City. It was nice to meet up with the former Eintracht Frankfurt coach, Oliver Glasner, who is there now. Uh, How yeah, was that? I interviewed him. Yeah, it was great to see him again. And he was like, whoa, are you here? And uh, <laughs> uh, So, uh, yeah, so I interviewed him and had a chat afterwards. What was quite interesting was that when uh, at Sellers Park, there's a very small corridor where where we have the rooms where the Premier League will will where we access our rooms for the interviews and and uh, Pep Guardiola and Oliver Glasner will stand like for six seven minutes uh, discuss discussing football there. I mean, it was very interesting just the knowledge uh, and the the willingness to share from Pep. Of course, I that was my first question with Oliver Glasner. What I talked about, and he said. I've been I've been as Crystal Palace for six weeks, and it's it's great that he wants to share his his knowledge and all that. I love that. That's a good part of our game. Ending up with Manchester City quite co- uh, convincingly at the end, but in the first half, Oliver Glasner made him lose the ball so many times, and Rodri losing the ball ball more uh, for that first half than he'd done the whole career at Manchester City, but still winning four two. And then I had a big one yesterday, Manchester United against Liverpool. I'm talking about the bridge to, to Germany with Jurgen Klopp. I had an interview with Jurgen Klopp and Bruno Fernandes talking about this brilliant goal. And I used a quote from, or, or I was talking to, I started the interview with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know that personality who changed, same person, which is Manchester United. And my last question was about quoting the Beatles uh, with Manchester United in, on the table being the nowhere land. And Bruno is a... Is a He's a funny character because if you if you watch Bruno Fernandes on the pitch, he looks like that uh, that annoying kind of player running around using his body language. But uh, but outside the pitch, he's completely different. He's so polite. He's well articulated. He's doing great interviews. There he is a uh, is a good example. So it was a great weekend. But of course, Marcus, as we do, uh, as I'm traveling or waiting for a Premier League game, what I do do my job, I follow German football and the Bundesliga and the drama in the German Bundesliga. And and so it was, and we can't really start anywhere else. I mean, Bayern is, uh, Bayern is a huge part of German football, but I mean, we wish we could talk, start with other topics, but when they're that sort of contentious and that attention grabbing as they are, there is only one place to start. It is Bayern Munich losing to Heidenheim away. And I'm sure the Heidenheim Fans, the club, all circled in match day 28 against Bayern Munich at home. Little would they know that they had a, well, following their victory, they're all but mathematically secured in the Bundesliga, which in of itself is an incredible achievement. I said it uh, on Twitter as well. I said that in terms of stories of the season, it is Heidenheim. It's a town of 50,000 people. I say this to put into context that when mighty Bayern come to visit, yes, they're in poor form. Yes, they're in disarray as we will get into with Max Eberl's comments. But they're 2-0 out to Bayern, and they turn it around 
Um, two goals by by T Tim Kleindienst and one by uh, Kevin Sessa. Um, let's let's just briefly just say an incredible achievement by Heidenheim first and foremost. What Kevin Schmidt has done there, all credit to them, and they're now all but secured. Um, and then there's obviously the case of of a Bayern Munich. The floor is yours. Well, it is a case because I think this game. I mean, they could go to Heidenheim and win. Leverkusen will win and they will still win the league. But what's going on at Bayern now is it's quite interesting to see when a team, a club, just fall together. I mean, that's what's going on now. Because if they went to Klein, uh, Kleindienst, uh, Heidenheim, and I say Kleindienst, 28 year of age, he's been a traveller, been around, number 10 for Heidenheim, scoring two goals got Bayern. That is a... Not only a great achievement, that is, that is absolutely a day to remember. But say that Heidenheim win 1 0, so Bayern goes there and lose, that can happen. But the thing is, when Bayern go there with, with Kane and Gnabry scoring the goals, they are 2 0 up, and in the 50th minute they get a 1 2, and then they lose 3 2. Then, then, then that is a consequence of something more, well, bigger problem for, for Bayern that we've seen for a while. And you can will. I because we're just on that topic of what you're saying. It's interesting. Like there, you're saying there are a lot of variables. So yes. So to what point can you attribute all this to the Tuchel or the team? Like where, wherein lies this responsibility? Because I am wary of giving simplified solutions. It's complex. A lot of things. And I know Tuchel hasn't done a good enough job. But at what point do you also say, listen, the player's mentality, the pride that comes into it needs to now be ser seriously questioned because this is more complex like you're saying than one person one member etc yeah and as you were saying Max Ebel the head of sport of, of Bayern more or less said that after the game I mean because the big question was then will he be on a bench on Tuesday uh, we are uh, taping this episode uh, on uh, Monday late afternoon so we we don't know that maybe think it happen. Of course, we just as we we go on now, Marcus Bochum Bochum maybe will fire Lech and uh, uh, there is uh, Rudy Fuller extended his contract. A lot. There's always something going on with the German FA and and everything. But so we can't be breaking news. But of course, it was a breaking news on Saturday. The the scenario that Tuchel could be fired before the Arsenal game. And a lot of people will listen to this. Maybe they've already seen the Arsenal Bayern Munich game, but but still, Max Eber was very clear. He will stay on as a coach. But we also do know if they get a hammering by uh, Arsenal, uh, I think the Tuchel will be gone. Uh, and when you see the recent form of Bayern now losing two 0 at home against Dortmund, three two against Heidenheim. when you see Arsenal playing against Brighton, and they were like they could have been four or five. They could win four or five, and they 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 they, they play a great game. Saliba, Gabriel, Erdogan, Jesus running for fun, Harvard. So they are informed, but so things could be be changed. And what is all talking about now in German press and in German media is, of course, Tuchel. But you're 100 percent right, Marcus, because Tuchel, Tuchel, well, he will be the first to know. We will know that the one who will pay the the ultimate price is the is the coach. The, the old cliche you can. Fire twenty people, twenty players, but it's of course this is not only down to Thomas Tuchel. This shows a Bayern team where the attitude is not right. This shows uh, a team that hiding behind the skirt of Thomas Tuchel. This shows a team that doesn't know what's on stake here, not only for them but for the whole club. I mean, there are equal points now with Stuttgart. I it mean, talks now if about if they if they, that for them to secure the Champions League spot. <laughs> That's exactly, what the exactly. narrative is. Yeah, now. but they, yeah, and, and and we can laugh about it, but they are closer to get out, much much closer to get out of the Champions League places in the Bundesliga than going after Bayer Leverkusen. And of course, with Bayer Leverkusen winning in Union again, dramatic. We can talk about that a bit later because there was some dramatic minutes uh, at Union. But but still, Bayern need to sort their things out. And the reason I said Rudy Fuller, Marcus, is that he is the head of sport for the, for the male national team for, for Germany. So he extended his contract now over the World Cup 2026. And 
there's no breaking news that his first job now will be to secure a national coach. So they will probably fight for the same people getting that job. The wet dream is, of course, to get Jurgen Klopp. He won't do it now. It will take one year rest. But Julian Nagelsmann is their main candidate. And we could end up, like we've said before, that Bayern and the German FA could fight out for the former uh, uh, Bayern coach, Julian Nagelsmann. So, so, well, German football are often defined by Bayern but because Bayern sometimes can hide their mistakes what we've seen over the years in the Champions League. Although the last two years they've been knocked out in the quarterfinal as well. Pointly, a Villarreal a couple of three seasons, top of two seasons ago, which was not good at all. But Bayern is so much the the the, the sign, the, the 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 leader of German football. So the stake of Bayern Munich at the moment that is not only bad news for them, but it's also bad news for German football in an international environment where the German Bundesliga are fighting so hard to find their place in competition with the Premier League. And La Liga. What do you think prompted uh, Max Eberlad to come out after the game to speak that honestly about about the team? Why now? Because he watched the team. I think because he he will say, well, there is always some there are always some bad signs for coaches when they when they start about talking about XG in in their uh, in their explanation of games. That's point one. I can understand how how you can use XG, but but don't use it when you're going to explain the performance. Secondly, when you're talking about the project, that is always a good si- a bad sign when a coach will start talking about the project. I think it was it was it was so important for Max Ebel now to to understand that yes, you can fire the manager. They've done that. They fired Nagelsmann. They got Tuchel in. They fire Tuchel, but that won't change the culture of Bayern. This is not only down to a manager, mind you, that both Christoph Freund. And Max Eberl coming there with clean hands because they're not responsible for what's going on. Meaning also that that could be the reason why it's not humiliating to take back Julian Nagelsmann because the people in charge at that time, Salah Hamidzic and Oliver Kahn, are gone. So if they say that now, people will say, well, well done. Because he could be the front head of a younger, a more dynamic Bayern team, as we now see a lot of clubs, even Manchester United, would you see my new or or the or the new centre half? Uh, there are so many young players coming through now in the ranks all over the place, also in Leverkusen and so on. So I think Max Ebel is not only speaking for this week to calm it down before for the game against Arsenal, but I think it's just a longer perspective because you have to change the culture at Bayern. There are, I would say, four or five players that they have to knock out in the summer. They have to get players out to, to make that culture better. I, if you are, you would probably ask me to name them. We can name them later because I think that is, this is a matter of not only who it is, but, but something got to be done. They need to get... get because my, mind you, Mark, is just at the end of that. There are more money involved in the Premier League, but there is a load of players at Bayern who apparently earns 20 million euro a year. And when and when your return is that you have to not make yourself sure that you get into Champions League when you are two 0 up in Heidenheim and losing, that that needs to be changed because that kind of managing a club is not more sustainable. Uh, there's a kind no part of that that is sustainable for them. So so I think Max Ebel is preparing himself for the culture cha- culture change that needed to be done at Bayern. Yeah, he seemed he seemed almost to get a, a, a few answers from that because it was almost as if he, as he as if he was revealing to us sort of the answers that came to him where it, and sort of probably been brewing over over the last or since he's arrived but saying that this is not the Bayern I know I have a lot of respect for Bayern but this is this is uh, this is not good enough and, and was pretty blunt as such. And to your point, in terms of the rebuild, yes, Bayern need a rebuild. I think what is interesting is you look back to 2019 and, and Bayern had a, they had a good core dad of, of leaders. They had Neuer in the back and then you had Boateng and Alaba and then you had Thiago and then you had maybe then players that we would define as world-class, but even still probably not the leaders 
with that being the next card. So I'm talking thinking Kimmich, Goretzka, Alfonso Davies, these type of players that they were around other good players as well. And I think disappointingly so, they haven't been able to step into those key leadership positions that were left behind by the likes that I've mentioned. Um, and then I actually call into question, you need more than from England's captain in terms of, and we can, yes, of course, he's got many goals and as such, but there is there is a rebuild, a sort of a new sort of character come in, and I can use Shaka coming into Leverkusen and see the, the impact he's had on a team uh, as such in the way that he's been able to command that midfield and that, that team. And that has been severely lacking for Bayern. And therefore, you need to put into question someone like Kimmich and Goretzka, who can, yes, who can show through their body language that they they care. But at the end of the day, this team is in disarray. And 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 I look also as a centre-back, you bring in Upamecano and Kim, who are two of the most desired centre-backs in the world, and the price tag that comes with it. For me, the, the defending there is is shocking. And that's a lot of factors. What what is that? Is is that the tactics? Mm. Is that the mentality and the approach? Maybe more so, because those are basic mistakes. All credit to Heidenheim. But you look at those goals, it is it is really basic defensive faults that I worry about. So it will be a, a busy summer for 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 Bayern. That I think any concluding thoughts before we go into more uh, into the into the upcoming champions. Well, I think you're right because, uh, of course, in everything you say, because you've seen how many players have been becoming better. Harry Kane, world-class finisher. We know that, that he will score well. He adjusted to the Bundesliga sensational. That That is not uh, always easy done. So all credit to him. We also have to give a, a compliment to Thomas Müller playing his 700th game. Yeah. He's only Sepp Meyer eight nine go games ahead of him uh, now uh, at the um, at the all time record for Bayern games. But still, this also down to Thomas Müller. And, uh, and and imagine a new coach will come in and say it's time to change. It's time to tell Neuer that I will go for Nübel, who is Stuttgart. Uh, we'll take him and we'll take new. I need new faces. I need new, new blood. Thomas Müller, you have to leave. You have two or three games left to take the all-time record. You have to leave. I mean, there are so many decisions to be made there. I'm not coming coming down to them, uh, really, because they've done so much over the years. But yes, as you were saying, going to be a busy, busy summer. You've also got the case with Saragossa, who, uh, who they took on. He's not even more or less hanging around in the squad. He's telling Spanish... Uh, papers that Thomas Tuchel doesn't speak to me. Thomas Tuchel says, yeah, I do, and so on. So there's something wrong in the kingdom of Bayern, and it needs to be sorted because there are a new sheriff in town, Marcus, to help you with the bridge for the champion of <laughs> Thank the 23-24 you very much. season. Thank you very much. I mean, these, this club is breaking records for fun. Uh, equal the number, number of, of, of unbeaten games to the start of a Bundesliga season. Guardiola's Bayern and Klopp's Dortmund um, in terms of 2013-2014 uh, season and 2011-2012 season, respectively. Their runs, unbeaten runs, ended on match day 29, which we have, um, which is the upcoming match day as such. Just to lay the scenario, if Bayern lose to Cologne or Köln on Saturday and Stuttgart lose to Fra Frankfurt in the evening, Leverkusen are already champions without having played. If Bayern or Stuttgart win... Then a win for Leverkusen at home to Bremen on Sunday. We'll see them crown champions. And then if Bayern and Stuttgart draw, then a point will also be enough for, for Leverkusen. Um, I mean, 16 points ahead, uh, 18 games to play for. They're practically champions. I get a thumbs up randomly there on the screen there to, to, <laughs> to signal it. Um, I mean, for for Leverkusen now, they'll win the league. They're in the cup final. Um they're playing West Ham in the Europa League. I mean, if we would have said them winning the league would be a it would have been a massive success. But now it's almost one of one in which you know you'd like to see them get a, you get a big greedy and say okay, but well, go for the treble then, um, and and then take it from there. Well, I think the toughest thing would be West Ham because West Ham is a, a widely uh, underestimated in, in 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 England. I mean, some great players in there. They can play a fantastic counter 
uh, counter uh, attacking style with David Moyes. David Moyes is a he's one of the old foxes. He knows what to do. He's tight there. Also, Great European experience the won the conference European league. Ex- yeah. Won the conference league last season. But as, so I think that will be the hardest one. I mean, Leverkusen will be sky high favorites at home against Kaiserslautern. But you never know. I mean, we've seen this before, and and they will obviously win the league. Uh, and now on Sunday, to make all simple, they play Werder Bremen at home. If they win, they are champions. That that's that's what it's like. And uh, and then of course the Invincibles. They never lost. So then it's the same as we all said yesterday when it was one nil to Liverpool at halftime. We went into the press room. I did my thing pitch side, and we said they're so typical now because Liverpool should have been four or five off. That Manchester United will come out to turn around as they did. So I watched uh, Inter Frankfurt against Werder Bremen on on Saturday. Werder Bremen were okay. They're in a in a position on the table where they they don't have to look back, but they at least know that they have a mirror uh, somewhere there because both Mainz and Cologne winning uh, now that put Bochum. Union and Werder Bremen, especially the two, two first ones. But yeah, it, it's going to be a fantastic season for, for Alonso. But Alonso, as a winner, Leverkusen as a winner, they don't want to end up winning the league and losing against Kaiserslautern in the final. That will make them feel a bit bad because they are desperate now to win the double. And this is the team, this is their ultimate revenge for the time they could win the league, they could win the cup. And they could win the Champions League final. Uh, they lost against Unter Haching. That was a big, 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 big surprise. And then they lost against Real Madrid. It was not a big surprise. And if you then add that there was that goal of uh, Zinedine Zidane, then you know what was going on uh, like over 20 years ago. So, And then they lost the cup final. And that's what they got is never cousin. Now it's more never losing. Uh, and uh, Alonso, Alonso is up there with the greatest now because he's he he kind of stopped Bayern after eleven wins, eleven titles, and the future of Alonso is quite interesting because okay, he's said now that he, he he will stay, stay for another season. So the speculations are already now going on what's happening next next summer. If two plus two, Marcus is four, then Angelotti will leave. The post at uh, Real Madrid and Alonso, former player, Spaniard, he will come there and take over the job. I get into my mind as well, Marcus, because now then uh, Tottenham will get their coach, Bayern will get their coach, so maybe they they need another coach then as well, which will make it even more complicated for the club. But maybe Alonso will think, why should I go there? Because I won't survive five minutes. But I just. In my mind, where somewhere, Marcus, what about Manchester City? What about Pep Guardiola? He's there. I interviewed him on Saturday. He is as hungry as ever. He wants to win the FA Cup, playing Chelsea in the semi finals. He's playing Real Madrid in the Champions League. He got now an extra chance in the, in the Premier League after Liverpool lost two points at Old Trafford. What about him just taking? Another season, and then he says, is enough. Mind you, he was his coach at Bayern. They have always said about the great respect they have for each other. Like Manchester City work as a club, they have a duty. They have a duty together with Pep Guardiola to think of the future, who will replace him. I'm not saying he said that he will stay for another couple of two, three seasons, but you never know. But that. Xabi Alonso is also on the list for Manchester City. That is quite, quite clear. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I haven't thought uh, too much about that, but uh, you never know. Uh, Guardiola uh, is at City the longest he's been at any club, uh, expressing a desire to to extend that. But um, we'll see. It could come out of the blue, just like it did with, with Jürgen Klopp. Um, that s- s- battles for European spots. Stuttgart all but uh, secured European places, um, but now in the fight for for second, um, Grassi with his 24th goal of the season. That's the joint uh, club record with Mario Gomez back in the 2008-2009 season. Then combined with the 15 goals scored by by Undav, that is the most prolific strike partnership in in the club's history. 
Um, quite the phenomenal development for a club that were in the relegation playoffs um, that convincingly saw off Hamburg at the time. But even still, uh, wow, an, an incredible job by, by Hernes. And then we also have Dortmund and, and Leipzig. We knew that Dortmund were going to have a tough month ahead. When they got the Champions League um, semi-finals, they played Bayern. Um, they played now Stuttgart at home, really struggled against uh, Stuttgart this season. But then they have uh, the Battle of the Borussias against Gladbach, who won 3-1 away to Wolfsburg. They needed that, Seoane and, and the guys. And then they have Leverkusen, and then they go away to, to Arbe Leipzig. And it really is, we know that the Champions League spots might extend to five teams in the Bundesliga. But even still, Dortmund and Leipzig are fighting for that fourth spot that guarantees them that. And Leipzig won 4-1 in Freiburg. Um a pretty defining month that for Terzic, and I would say a defining month for Marco Rosa in the sense that his squad is pretty strong and that the expectation should at the very least be that they get Champions League football. Yeah, for both of them. But I think that the um, the, the, the the position is more in danger for, for Terzic because he's been there. He doesn't have that. He has a lot of credit because uh, Vatsko is the head of sport there uh, or head of more or less the club. He uh, he likes it very much. He's always supported him. But I was just saying that Terzic, if he's now getting knocked out of the Champions League, still had a great run there. It's, uh, it's only a week since he beat Bayern away from home. But having said that, to be the devil's advocate and be the advocate for Heidenheim, who who are not beating Bayern at the moment. So so that's in there. But I think that Terzic, he needs to have the Champions League position. He needs to get that. I think that Rosa's position in Leipzig is better because, remember, they have sold a lot of players. That is a kind of a transformation that's going on there. So Stuttgart, the winner of the season, Sebastian Hörners, I get asked always when I, my, my, English, my English college with, with, the, with, the, with the clubs coming up for grab here with Liverpool, maybe Chelsea, maybe Manchester United. What about Sebastian uh, Hörners? But he's, as you say, he's just extended his contract. But his dad, Dieter Hörner, who is his agent, I guess, I guess he's got a clause in there. But I think that the Stuttgart management have done their homework. So that clause will only be in, in power, so to say, for next summer. But uh, so there will be a hell of a, a, a battle for that fourth position. As you were saying, the fifth can also give you Champions League. And then under, I watched also Eintracht Frankfurt. Of course, they played at home. Tutta got the equalizer 1-1, then he got sent off. It was, again, a, a, a game that the Frankfurter fans don't want to see. They want more power in there, talking about Glasner. Uh, they they want to change their, their way of playing. You know, Tuffman, it takes some time. Trush uh, extended his contract, which is fantastic news for the club. But I, I got a column in Bill site when I, I'm writing, I guess, I guess, tomorrow, saying that the problem is when you're an inexperienced coach, this is your first main job. You don't have the credit that an experienced coach would be because if they take the sixth position, that is a great season for them, I would say. And now they're six points ahead of Augsburg and Hoffenheim winning against Augsburg. They are also six points. The trouble is for uh, Eintracht Frankfurt now, now they're playing all the big ones. They're playing all the big ones. But I think on a positive side... I think that is nearly easier for them because then they don't have to make the whole play. They can play more more on uh, the opposition's strategy. So so I hopefully they will take the sixth position and uh, that, that will be a good season for my Eintracht. Yeah, you mentioned Hoffenheim beat Augsburg. Hoffenheim almost beat Leverkusen until Leverkusen turned around late. So they've been um, picking a run of form, trying to get that conference league uh, spot. Eintracht, like you say, in a rebuild with a new young coach, young players. Um, and Marcus Kresher said something along the lines when he was um, when he was a guest on, on the German uh, Doppelpass, I believe. Uh, that's the show. Um, which I also find to be an interesting phenomenon. Getting sporting directors there, I would, you, you know, imagine seeing the same in, in England. I don't think you could. Uh, that towards the end here, we just got to grapple with, the, with the, the relegation ride, which is coming down to being quite the thriller. Um, you had... Bochum up in the lead. Bochum now. I think Bochum have lost 20 points from winning positions this season. So which, which I would have all but seen them safe, obviously. 
Um, and there's a lot of factors involved in that. But even still, they are now three points ahead of Mainz, who are in the relegation playoff spot. you got Köln one point behind Mainz. So Köln are four points off of safety. And then you got Darmstadt, who are all but uh, down after they after Mainz beat Darmstadt 4-0. But now you've got these clubs that who were struggling to get uh, wins. They're picking up points at the very least. And now it seems to be a battle, at least between Köln, Mainz and Bochum. Köln on 22 points, Mainz on six, uh, 23, Bochum on 26, and then Wolfsburg lost at home to Gladbach. Uh, they are on 28. Um, at least we have this sort of a thriller to look forward to for the uh, for the remainder of the season, Dad. And as you know, I love a lot of relegation battle. Uh, but uh, the trend is, like you're saying, downs are gone. Uh, bad, because I like to have some... And no disrespect, one of the sm smaller clubs in the Bundesliga make it better. It seems that Holstein Kiel now uh, winning again. Holstein Kiel and St. Pauli, the Hamburger teams without HSV, will come up at least directly. So they will be replaced by that. But of course, Köln, Cologne, that is a big story if they go down. Uh, Bochum has, has been always between uh, Zweite Liga and Erste Liga. But that's why we started the show. But maybe when people listen to this, their, their coach, Thomas Lech, could be fired uh, because uh, it's all about trends at the end of the season. There is so there are six games left and then you will be worried because now is the time to change. I remember when back in 99, when we miraculously save our place in the Bundesliga, I think Jörg Berger had seven games. He got seven games before the end of the season. There's still points to, to battle but because Bochum has shown all season they are a bit better than the other teams down there but now the trend is so bad and then opposite is with Mainz their trend yes they beat in Darmstadt and yes they were that is not a, a great thing to do because Darmstadt is weak and they got hammered by Bayern Munich but we've seen them we saw them against Leverkusen there is a good trend there the, uh, our new bull the new coach uh, there's always a bull uh, at uh, at Mainz has changed them around. So you have a feeling that Mainz could kind of grab that fourth position at the end there because um, the, the two teams directly down, the third last will play against the third position in the, in the Bundesliga over two games. And that is the big game to be in the Bundesliga uh, or not to be in the Bundesliga. So, so the trend now say that uh, Mainz will be there. And what about Köln? who just uh, realized that, that they are a big club, normally a fantastic home crowd, great atmosphere this weekend uh, when when they managed to to win that 2-1 uh, as, as they did. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of things to talk about, Marcus. But the big ones, again, whatever we talk about is Bayern and what's going on there. I would just end, Marcus, by saying that the Thomas Struns, uh, former Bayern player, he put in new names. So the last one was Lotta Mateus. I'm not saying that will happen, but just shows you every alternative now is possible at Bayern. <laughs>